Hello, welcome everybody again. This is Tuesday night, right before Thanksgiving. Uh, we are going to be on tomorrow. We have a special guest tomorrow. If everything works out good, it is uh, Echo Lloyd's daughter. Uh, of course, you remember we featured Echo. Uh, she was the one missing, I think it was Missouri or Arkansas. Uh, I think it's Arkansas uh, where she uh, been missing out there. I contacted her and she had a bad experience with a couple of people on YouTube, but she has given me a chance to bring her on. And after watching our other people, we had... Um, we had uh, online and uh, she said she gives us a chance. So she said, uh, I'm going to contact her again tomorrow and verify everything. But uh, I believe she will be coming on to tell us her side of the story. Pretty interesting stuff we talked about. Also, I want to touch base about a couple of others before we get into the Michael Chambers case. And I have a special guest with us tonight. He is uh, a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends. Uh, and uh, we'll introduce him in a few minutes. He is a homo certified homicide uh, investigator. Uh, he is a paramedic, an instructor, uh, a paramedic. And he's got a lot of law enforcement experience. And uh, we actually worked together and worked uh some death cases together also. Um, you want to remember uh, Andre Mor Morton Jr. of Humble, Texas. He is still missing. Uh, I did talk to uh, uh, Veronica again by phone uh, in the last couple of days, and um, uh, there is information coming in, and maybe maybe we'll have some uh, positive uh, information coming in in the next uh, uh, few days or weeks. Also, she has started a Facebook group, uh, Facebook. Facebook group, uh, or Facebook page for uh, the uh, trying to find uh, Andre. So if y'all want to go over there and like that page, that would be good. Uh, and maybe see if we can generate some leads on this particular case. Um, I did want, while I'm waiting on Tony to come on here and to come in here, uh, I did want to uh, come on in and talk about this case a little bit. This is something that I read about. Uh, Lakeisha S. Taylor was last seen the morning of June 13th of 2008 at Lake Charles, Louisiana home, she shared with her cousin, Sandy Stevenson. Sandy left home that morning to get breakfast, and when she came back, Lakeisha's clothes were ironed on the bed with a full bath waiting for her and no signs of Lakeisha's, Lakeisha. 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 Her purse, including her wallet and identification, were left behind. Her family uh, is tried calling her cell phone, but it kept going to voicemail. Mm -hmm. They reported her missing to the Lake Charles Police Department, who interviewed various individuals, including her estranged husband. A news article reported that he was a person of interest at one time, but police stopped short of labor him a suspect. Uh, Deputy Chief Mark Krauss, I think that's the way you spell it, believed, uh, let's see, I'm leaving, believes that this is not a case that she's simply walking out of her family and her three children sus and suspect foul play. I think so. In October of 2010, investigators received a tip that her body might be burned on a property in North Bank Street, but two days search yielded no clues. Um, Lakeisha's family remains committed to finding out what had happened to her. Her brother uh, believes someone has answers, but is afraid to step forward. Now, that's always the case. A lot of them 
people when you know especially if they ran into foul play uh Crease's disappearance, but never called. Let me see. Uh, anonymous tip came came in not too long after her disappearance, but never called back after police con- contacted them. Uh, Deputy Chief remains hopeful that the case will be solved and stated that the case remains under investigation. This gives hope to the family who find the facts that police have not given up. And it's very encouraging. Um, Henry Simpson. Yeah. Uh, Henry. So I'm not, I don't know if that's female or male, but anyway, said, I fought hard. He said his wife was dating a black guy and she had something to do with it. And the sheriff knows exactly what went down. He said they took him by boat to the lake where they do. I don't know. I said she remains missing. She remains missing. She has a tattoo on her neck. If you have any information about her disappearance, please contact the Lake Charles Police Department. He said they were all friends. 337-491-1311. So is he friends with her? He said said we were all friends. Uh, They were in a glass bottom boat. Okay, so, I, I highlight that. Yeah. yeah, something to do with it. They do glass bottom boat uh, shows. The sheriff knows. Took him by boat to a lake where they do. Wow. It sounds, you know, I can't understand how she just disappeared. She probably answered the door to something, you know. She answered the door. Okay, we got uh, we got Tony up here. Let me see if I can get him uh, in a couple of minutes here. Uh, Mike said we were all friends. Tony, you with me? I don't. Hold on just a minute, buddy. I can't. I haven't done your mic here. Uh, let me, Who is that white-headed guy? Uh, let me get unmute the mic here. Uh You got him? I thought. He's muted. I'm, ah, you're you laughing. <laughs> you're, uh, hold on just a minute, Tony. I'm having trouble unmuting your mic for some reason. I can try to read his lips. Uh, it says unmute mic. Unmute mic. Unmute mic. What is the problem here? You see, he's maybe he's got it muted. Have you got your mic muted there, Tony? Right now. All right, I'm good. What you get? I got you right good, Tony. Okay. Okay, we got you. I heard Dana in the background. All right, <laughs> that's good. That gray hair is almost blinding to me gray. now. <laughs> it is white. It is all white. <laughs> well, you uh, know what happened? You know what happened when Moses went up into the mountain? Yeah. <laughs> but I know those girls gave you that white hair. Uh, <laughs> well, that might be the case. <laughs> Uh, Tony has got some a beautiful family, uh, beautiful two beautiful girls, and uh, they're growing up. I uh, want to introduce him a little bit here. Uh, Tony has been my friend for probably the last, uh, I don't know, 20 30. years, so, 30 years, yeah, I don't know, long, a long time. Anyway, we rode together a lot uh, in law enforcement. He was a sergeant and a school resource officer for a good bit of a time, and also in patrol. He's also a traffic homicide investigator and expert in that field. He also has certified uh, death investigation uh, uh, detective, and he also was a, uh, a lead investigator, chief investigator at a police department near me up here in my area where I live now. But anyway, he's very good at what he does. He knows his stuff, and he is a paramedic also. So if any of y'all fall out now, if he was close, he could help you, but he's not close, so he can't help you. So. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, Michael Chambers. I did send him a copy of what I had, and we're gonna look at some pictures and stuff and examine this from a forensic point of view. Overall, Tony, what did you see about when you read the report? Well, I looked at it first today. Uh, I know that you had contacted me uh, day before yesterday about uh, getting on here with you, and I 
wanted to have an open mind. I'm glad that you didn't really tell me anything about it. So I got to kind of clue in on what I could find out about it and see some pictures and things like that. Um, I would say, first of all, it's a very peculiar uh, situation. Um, I found some uh, grave discrepancies that were questionable as to maybe way the case was handled on the front side of it. Um, that being said, uh, unfortunately, as we both know, sometimes in law enforcement, um, some folks don't even receive the appropriate training uh, to do some of the things that they do. And um, of course, those are things that are even debatable today in reference to whether it be a death investigation or just anything in particular for law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement really has to have some certified and trained people to do certain types of jobs within the uh, field, if you will, of whatever is uh, uh, the job at that particular moment. Uh, that being yeah. death investigation, death investigation by far is uh, one of the most important things that we as law enforcement officers would have done because, uh, of course, we want to find out the truth of how someone has passed or deceased. Now, now, Tony, I'm going to I'm going to show these and you tell me what you we talked about this a little bit. I want to show you these little pictures here. They're going to be kind of in front of us. Uh, what does that tell you about that, that, that trail, that blood trail, and also the amount of blood you saw? Apparently, that was wherever he was struck at first. Head wounds bleed a lot, though. Well, from, from just looking at the gait and everything of how that splatter is taking place, it's, it's the movement, if you will, of the person that is, of course, bleeding. Uh, first of all, if it was a artery, uh, it would be a spurting scenario. This looks more of something that was venal, but the walk or what would be perceived as a walk is what looks like from that, uh, I guess you would say, layout of the blood or the blood trail. Another thing is... Uh, what, I I noticed, what I noticed was... If I was walking upright with a head wound, I right, it's going to come down. The, it is going to come down the body, possibly on the clothes or right, something I mean, like that. So this, if anything, he would have had to have been going forward or or something like that. If he was hit, possibly from the head, uh, unless he had a deflecting. Uh, blow like uh, maybe using your arm or something and then you have blood coming from your arm and then you're walking out or something of that nature would um, you would you think it might have been carried because you know how your head bobbles when you're being carried it is, it is possible that uh you could be carried from what i'm seeing in those pictures uh it is possible um i would question as to where the pooling, I guess you would say. It's not obviously a deep pooling. It's just a lot of splatter in that one given area in the uh, back of that picture. Um, that would be a, obviously a pausing moment or something to that nature. So, I, you know, I would like to be able to see before that trail and kind of look around. Um, another thing is when uh, someone takes a, a blow to their body, uh, you usually can see a splatter of sorts yeah. now with a weapon uh, depending on what type of weapon now i know they said they found a, a pipe uh or a, yeah, uh, rod. Like rod, rather yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and rod. so i know one thing that i would question the most is was that del rod turned into forensics to do an analysis for a dna capture that would have been something that one you would have tested the blood that's on the floor and then you would have tested the gentleman's DNA through clothing or anything. A toothbrush could have been turned in to match DNA. Uh, there's various things that we could, we can, uh, you know, actually take up as a sample of the, of the uh, victim and then send that off for analysis to get a DNA match. And then you would determine whether the blood and the handprint that's on there would have been the victim's 
through the DNA match of that, whether the victim's blood would be there in the floor, as well as we would probably want to look at uh, more. I, I, of course, don't see the weapon per se, and really, if you could match a fingerprint or not, but as you very well know, I mean, we've matched fingerprints many times, many of the years that okay. we did investigations. Yeah, we, got, we got a couple of questions, uh, Tony. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, T.S. Jackson said, could the blood trail be staged? Henry Simpson, Henry Simpson says he was dragged. And Lori says, explain, explain the large round blood drops. Thanks. Did you hear what it was? Well, the large, the large round blood drops uh, could very well be a, a pretty substantial uh, laceration or something to that nature that would cause the body to bleed like that. Uh, usually, though, when we see a spurting scenario, it's not going to be in a perfect little trail like that. Um, it's going to be uh, sporadic, and and once someone is hit in an artery, it's going to kind of go. A little bit of everywhere. So could he um, staged or was he dragged? Well, thing it looked like to me that he, he might have been carried because yeah. the head when when you're carried you don't usually hold the head and the head will go back and forth when you carry somebody. And right. it does the if it's if it's a head wound, which it appears to be it might have been a head wound, then uh it would it might, you know, bobble back and forth. And I think that's what they're saying. Now staged uh, and we talked about this before. It, if you're if you're hit in the head or you hit yourself in the head, let's just say somebody hits yourself in the head and they're bleeding, walking straight up and down, you're going to get that all over your clothes. You're not going to be have like a trail like that. I guess you could hold your head down and do that. I don't know. That's it, what Rowan just you know, asked. Rowan said, know. could this be a blood trail of walking victim? If you're bleeding and leaning forward, making mm -hmm. the trail, your feet would also walk in the trail, right? I would think so. That, that is correct. You would think that, that the they would somehow step into the blood or whatever as well. Uh, but that's what I was saying earlier. Uh, you would think that if anything they would have had to have been leaning forward and dropping a trail and then they would have had to really do a dance and jig to get around the droplets if their heads land forward because uh, normally we would see a footprint within the blood or something like that even in those situations angel said it's confirmed it is michael's blood okay well okay. it's my blood and also the dow i think had his blood on it also but i mean it was found on the side of the the side of the garage there outside the garage and the dowel when he talks about a dowel i'm thinking of just a big wooden uh rod you right. know you mm -hmm. put a dowel but they can be any size at all i wanted to well the gen the gentleman that made the uh, point about the um about walking forward and everything that's that's a very good point to have been able to come out and talk about yeah. Now, so again, that's why we raise these arguments. We go through motions of trying to recreate the scene, if you will, uh, based on what we see and what we have to go on. Uh, but again, uh, that is, I mean, I, I tend to lean into what you're saying, Tommy, about the issue of maybe him being carried or pulled out or something like that. Um, right. It, it, and, it and could very well be. Listen, I, uh, I always, uh, I go by Thomas on here just for, I uh, just started that. I, Tony calls me Tommy. Uh, <laughs> some people call me Tom from school. So it, it, you could call, you could hear me called anything here. <laughs> but we're, we're, just, we're just going to be TNT tonight, okay? <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is the timeline that I got off of uh, some of the stuff I read. Eight o'clock, Becca, and that's his wife, spoke to Papa, what they called him by phone. Uh, Eleven fifteen, his surveillance shows him at Walmart. Now, I understand he went to get some things for her mascara. Mascara. And, what woman sends her husband I to the store know. for mascara? I None. Don't know. 
3 p.m. neighbors. My room. wife wouldn't let me go pick out any makeup. Exactly. Yeah, tell me it's the wrong color. <laughs> uh, uh, 3 p.m. neighbors arrived home, did not notice anything out of the ordinary. They all they also never saw Papa. Uh, the rest of the afternoon, they did yard work for a reason. Detectives believe for for this reason, detectives believe that whatever happened to him happened between 12 and 3 p.m. 6.15, his wife returns home. 6.55, Hunt County Sheriff's Office receives a missing person call. Uh, you know, I want to get out here and, and say this. Even on a lot of these other cases that we've, we've looked into, and another case I want to, I'm going to send you also look into for me and get your opinion is the Suzanne Morphew case. We have been looking at that case for, for months. Uh, but this one is, why so quick to reporting missing? I know that his car was there and everything, but why so quick? You know what I mean? 40 minutes. I mean, yeah, I was about to say, you're talking about within an hour and a half or right, so. 40 minutes. That's about <clears throat> from 6.15 to uh, 6, uh, let's see again, um, 6.15 to 6.55. You know, I, I don't, I mean... Huh? I don't know why 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 I'm reporting missing so fast. That's my thing. You know, unless you knew he was missing to start with, you knew that they was, you know, were gonna not find him. I mean, you know, if, if your wife had came home or my wife came home and I'm not here and everything's in the house, I'm right. assuming, you know, she'd probably think, well, heck, he went for a walk. He he saw, you know, and maybe some of his friend came over here or or right. something else. I mean, it wouldn't be the first thing you do is call the police and report him. <clears throat> well, if they if they have determined that his blood was the handprint on that uh, rod, then I would really question as to was there any tools or anything in there? Was there more of a blood area anywhere in the in his shop that he had? possibly touched anything or whatever and so I of course rule that out and then I would go into the mode of possibly that he had a defensive wound you know somewhere on his yeah. arm or hand well, they said they they said that he had been extremely depressed but I don't think if you know unless he's trying to fake his own death by some reason I just don't see that uh what did you say right. then which came first, the pool of blood or the trail of blood? And either way, if you're saying they're drag marks or foot marks, where are the footprints or the drag marks in the right. pavement? That's a yeah, good question. Well, we don't know that. And That's could have been thing. carried out by two people? It yeah, very well could have. I mean, well the, the blood didn't have any footprints in it. No, and I don't think would have, I don't think for sure he would have gone riding on a bicycle after receiving this injury. No, <laughs> that too, so. There's no even. Uh, uh, I talked to other people about this case, people that know the family, and they said they can't even verify that he had a bicycle, you know. Uh, let me go back to this other. Investigators discover uh, a drop of blood in Papa's, uh, a drop of blood in his workshop outside his home. Well, I, I would say that's a little mm -hmm. bit more than a yeah. drop of blood. Uh, to the side of the workshop, a large dowel rod on the ground with bloody palm print on it. Mm -hmm. And the search Friday night included a train K-9 uh, and department a helicopter and heat seeking technology turned up. No sign of him. No sign. Mm -hmm. of him. So it would, be, it would be interesting to know. And I know that you and I have worked cases and we, I've used luminol and things like that. It would be very interesting to canvas that whole scene with luminol. I agree. And, and determined if there was more than what the naked eye would see, because if you've got blood falling and dirt and things like that, uh, well, one there, thing is, there is a chance that people can miss things like that, and you can't see it until it's, you know, maybe you. It's like uh, you said, splatter. I mean, if they would have just had a mist of blood for okay. when he hit the uh, on the head or something, a mist would have flown out to one side. You could gather on what side the person was hit from. What then? Mm -hmm. Lori had a good point. Um, he never hit the floor, it doesn't look like. 
Because yeah, he may have gone down on his hands and knees, been hit from behind and went down on his hands and knees. I don't knees, think so. And then been carried out. Yeah, I am just don't. Well, there's nothing. I didn't see anything unless there was. They never indicated from the report that there was like handprints on the pavement. If it's dusty, right. shoe prints on the pavement, even like that. Doesn't uh, sound like they looked that This way. This right here was another part of it here. It says uh, March 13th. Uh, it said Hunt County first reached out to the Texas Rangers and FBI for assistance. Uh, a press conference held by the Hunt County Sheriff's Office and the family. Uh, for the presser, we learned that Papa's wallet and truck were at home. His cell phone ID and some cash are missing. Now, I understand, you know, we talked about this. They supposedly in this in this information said that the cell phone was tracked at four miles an hour or two miles an hour right. up, up to the bridge and then was missing. And we talked about this. First off, it's, they, and I don't know if you read there, but it's like 20 miles to the bridge. I think it's 17, 17 is what I remember. All right. all right. First off, if you're hitting the head, even you're not going yeah, to say you hit your own self in the head. Um, you're not going to drive a bicycle, even at that speed, it's, a bike's going to be driven a little faster, I think. Plus, right, the, question, the question still, you know, stands out there until, you know, Papa is found or, or whatever, that we don't know if he's got a head injury, or an arm injury, a back injury. We don't know right. what, what actually he had an injury from to cause the blood to be on the floor. However, um, if someone is injured uh, and then at his age and then the knee thing that I remember reading something about, he had bad knees. Um, he wouldn't have obviously walked 17 miles. Uh, the, the area out there was um, had construction workers around the bridge. They were, it, it was apparently a, uh, a high traffic area to the extent that there's, you know, cars randomly coming yeah. by at various times. Nobody saw anything. And that's the bridge. <laughs> right. You know, and I laugh at that when I see that. I mean, nobody right. jumps off a bridge. I mean, if they want to kill themselves, they jump off a bridge like down there where we used to be from. But they don't jump off an eight foot or nine foot bridge to kill themselves. Right. And right. drown them like we've. Me and you've talked about before. Drowning is not a comfortable death. You no. struggle to breathe. It gets in your lungs. You, it's it, the body is got an automatic survival instinct, and right. I just don't see him drowning himself or even attempting to drown himself. Well, well, during that time of the day, nobody would have been able to carry anybody out there and no. um, successfully. Have they put the body off of a bridge or anything like that. Could toss a phone though. He could walk out there and toss. That's a phone. what I think. I think that the. Yeah. Uh, I think whoever might have been down there was going down there. Someone maybe had saw someone else in the area, not necessarily him. Maybe they assumed that it might have been a worker or something, or a construction worker on the road or something out in that area. Well, but, so nobody uh, had to find, according to what I read. Do you have a question? Right, that but, but my. But that's what I'm saying. Would, was there a canvassing of the workers that were present on that day? I don't uh, know. Out there? What I read other places and what I've talked to uh, is the state, uh, the state, I'm assuming it's a state highway or a county road. Yeah, Someone uh, would have known uh, what work crews are out there working on the road and you could have followed up with those individuals. But now you and I both know. Uh, and most people know this by now. And if you don't, well, okay. But most people should know there, the technology exists that if you have a cell phone, uh, we can pretty much pinpoint down to meters of where you are. And uh, one thing that would have been uh, a questionable thing at that point is who was at his home possibly with a cellular device and there would have been a means to have gotten a search warrant through the means of the courts to assess that through a company of various companies because we obviously have various um, 
internet, I mean, not internet, but cell phone companies, you would have simply drafted a subpoena for the records to identify anyone hitting a pating or pinging a cell tower within that geographic area. And then you would have tried to have located that. Now, because it being a serious felony, being possible homicide or murder, that would have been the claims of why you would have been able to as most people would say, an invasion of their privacy. But when it comes to solving a murder, it would have the means of being able to canvas who is, in fact, in that area at the given time. And then you go and interview those people. And that's pretty much how you can solve some of these cases. Uh, that's a question. Um, could the blood on the floor have been from working on something at a previous time? And what about a yeah, wheelbarrow? If they put him in a wheelbarrow and they're wobbling out of there. Well, I, yeah, it could be they put him in something to get him out of there. I don't think it'd be something. I mean, if somebody's got that much blood on the floor, it probably would have been cleaned up. I would well, the, the blood from the pictures looks pretty fresh. Looks pretty fresh. So I wouldn't think that that's something. Yeah. That's what I thought. You've got to understand also how how blood reacts to air and everything after a period of time uh, and the coagulation of the cells within the blood. It's it's kind of technical and don't necessarily want to get involved in discussing all that. But uh, simply put, uh, yeah, that's that was, you know, obviously fresh. Yeah. And if you look back here, you know, there are some other stains on the floor. That he yes, I see that to the left of the trail. Yeah, There's, old stains or whatever. That, that looked like old stuff. stains or something like that, yeah. He he apparently kept a pretty tidy area. You look back through there. There's not a lot yeah. of dirt. There's not a lot of dust or, or anything. Right. On the floor. Um, we get, Tony, we get questions like what we're talking. So that's why I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's what I'm trying to do is, is to respond to some of the uh, questions. Right, I understand some stuff on here do about, what now yeah henry has got some stuff on here about a psychic i think a spirit session that supposedly michael said that they know what happened to him i okay. don't i don't know about that i kind don't of either stuff, I, I, so. I hadn't been around it uh this is uh some other timeline here announced right here on the 15th uh, the Sheriff's Department announced despite spending a day searching five-acre area northwest of Quinlan, no sign right. of alcohol was found. They're hoping for another tip. The 16th Facebook post made by Papa's granddaughter urges people to leave porch light on uh, and for Friday night for Papa. Uh, the 18th uh, search dogs pick up a scent and lead Sheriff uh, to a new area, Deer Lane and FM with 2101, about 500 yards from Changer's home, but they lost the scent. Now, that could, I'm going to tell you, uh, that could be a scent where he was taken to a vehicle, you know. Mm. Uh, the biggest thing, and I probably, I cut this off. I'll see if I got it on the next page. Becca, his wife, changed the family cell phone on March the 20th removed Justin and disconnected Michael's service, claiming he was, she was uh, starting to struggle with bills. But, you know, you got to understand this. He was a retired firefighter. Uh, his pension would not stop until he was declared dead. And then I bet you there was a life insurance policy. So I, I kind of, I just thought that was weird that she would cut right. it. The pension, the pension check would have still been coming in regularly depositing is, the bank account regularly, whether anybody had said anything or anything. So yeah. here's the thing too. If, if perchance he got hit in the head accidentally and wanders off cause of concussion, why would you cancel this phone? You know, yeah, right. I, I don't, I don't if know. anything, you'd want to keep it on to see if somebody turn it back on at a later time, oh, they charge yeah. it and turn it back on, or they try to, uh, what they call clone it or send, you know, try to put another service on it or whatever. It's still right. got the same. Uh, basically every phone has got a, uh, you know, a ticket number, I guess you'd say if you want to call it that or a serial number, but it also has a signal number that that signal number is identifiable to that particular phone. Right. And it said on the uh, 22nd, 
K9 uh, announced uh, after a K9 hit on Saturday, they hope to pick up the scent Wednesday morning. I don't know why they waited that long between Saturday and Wednesday. The third search revealed nothing. Fourth search revealed nothing. April the 20th. Now, this is a couple months. She begins to file paperwork to have him declared temporary dead, which that's something I do not understand. In Alabama, you got to be dead seven years to declare you. I mean, got to be missing seven years to declare you dead. Uh, she does this so she can sell his truck and other possessions to pay bills. That, to me, still, I'm just getting, I don't know. She went. She sold all of his prize cars. They said that some of the stuff that I've read said that he won. Well, I have a picture. Let me see. I have a Did picture. Did Anthony know about her saying that right he here. knew about all the affairs? Yeah, supposedly he knew about all the affairs she had. And also, uh, supposedly, uh I don't know. It's just a lot of stuff that makes me kind of wonder about that. I mean, it, I just don't see that, that. That could have been a reason why he's depressed, that she was having all these affairs. But I think, it, you know, what did I don't the, know. What did the, well, the, one, the, one, the one big thing that when I started reading the case, and I think you would agree with me. Did I, did you, you freezed up on me there for a second, Tony. Am I, am I back? Yeah, you're back. You okay. Froze. You froze right there. Go ahead. Okay. One thing about reading the case, what? Oh, uh, when I, when I started reviewing the case, one thing that really just troubled me, when any agency investigates a death, we always go into looking at the death as a, homicide and then we rule out that it's not a homicide before we jump the gun and rule it or go into the the thoughts of that it's suicide or whatever like that and that's one thing that i, I kind of i don't know it, it kind of i guess you'd say troubled me that the um sorry it's, it's pinching my ear there um anyway it troubled me that the sheriff's department, based on just some of the stuff that was that was given out, I I just I'm I kind of it troubles me. But I know that surely when they turned it over to the state investigators, I would think the state investigators would have went on ahead, started pulling cell tower stuff, since they obviously did pull the information to understand this two to four mile an hour thing that they were talking yeah. about. Let me ask you this because I know we know that they can track your cell phone and all this, but can they really, you think they could track the actual miles an hour? I mean, I have been around. Uh, well, people. here's a real, here's a real good example. If you go on to Waze right now, mm -hmm. uh, or some of these little apps uh, yeah. that are, that are traveling apps, you can literally put it there and you can start going down the road and it's going to tell you what your speed is. Yeah, that's true. So, yes, it does have the ability to track and verify your speed. Um, but for, thank but you. if you're a bicycle, I think that's closer. Well, it'd be a, that would be a very fast walk. But if right. somebody trying to throw something off, I mean, they could very well just kind of creep with a car or either. I don't know. It's kind an of aver an average, an average adult walking is between two to four miles an hour. Right. Uh, if someone is on a walker, they're like one mile an hour. Yeah. If, or if they're on a cane or something like that. If they're a bicycle, uh, I think it'd be a lot. But if they're a bicycle, normally a bicycle runs around five to 10 miles an hour. Some people, if they're speeding fast and in a race, I mean, obviously bikes are clocked at a much higher rate than that, but an average, you know, stroll, in your on your bike, so to speak, uh, runs about five ten miles an hour. Question. question. Okay, so the wife sending him to Walmart for um, mascara, which is really odd. Um, someone asked, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who asked it now. I'm sorry, I thought it was Coda. Um, said, could 
the wife have ordered a hit and they were waiting for him when he got home. Well, it could have been. I, I thought that was too. They maybe they wanted to get him out of the garage, you know, get him away from the house. She sends him to Walmart to pick up the stuff. The person that did it enters the garage and waits on him to come back and mm -hmm. park their car way out there where the canines tracked it to. You know, if you look, there's a mm -hmm. map on that case, I think, that I sent you. It shows it uh, the last part of the property where he was uh, tracked to. What? One other thing. Was there any blood on the outside of the, once they left the shed? Was there any blood? Only thing that I read was that the dowel on the side of the, the garage had blood on it, a palm print of blood. Now, here's what you think about. We're thinking that it's the palm print that he had. I got to get in my camera here that he was holding the dowel or somebody's holding dowel. But that might have actually been the end he grabbed. If somebody was swinging a, at this dowel at him when they had gloves on, if he grabbed the end of it, you know, that mm -hmm. might have been his bloody palm print. Obviously, he was already injured when uh, it was on there. So uh, it's a, there's a lot of stuff. The, the, the biggest thing I think about this case that's more of a kind of a weird is why does the sheriff conclude that it's suicide just because they don't know what happened and assume that he walked or rode a bicycle and jumped mm -hmm. in the uh, over the bridge with the bicycle. I've never heard of that. And not I mean not first of all, if if in fact they would have if that would have if that would have taken place, they I did read of that they uh, you know took divers and they did right. you know canvas of all a bike would have been found right down there below. Yeah, I doubt that he's gonna uh, swim down there and hold his bicycle. Yeah. You know, to me, that's just stupid. I, I mean, really, it just it would be, inter it would be interesting uh, to know the tributaries of the water and currents and flow and things like that. Yeah. And see if, you know, because if someone did drop, let's say hypothetically, the phone in the water, you know, it could be carried for a period of so many feet if yeah. you have a strong enough current yeah, going I in there. Yeah. So, because, uh, I mean, we've, uh, just in our years, think about how many times we've recovered uh, people that were grounding victims, and uh, they went down in a particular area, but you'd find them four or five, even 10 miles down. Wow. So, I mean, it is possible uh, for movement. Uh, and I have personally dropped my cell phone in the Gulf of Mexico on three or four different occasions. My, my city... <laughs> my city cell phone, which had to be replaced. And it, it, you know, it went down like this, you know, down a little bit. So even it, seriously, you, it, if you dropped or somebody threw the cell phone in the water, if it was a current, it could have went 15 feet and buried itself in the, in the muck. You know, I mean, they may never find the phone. Uh, well, key, key thing to look at in any of these kinds of cases is motive. What is the motive? Right. Okay, so, you know, you always, in, in a rule of thumb, uh, you always chase the money. And you, you chase, chase the money, and then you also look to see if there's, uh, which I know that there's already been mention of multiple affairs and things like that. So you look at all these things for, for motives, and you have to chase those leads down just as much. Processing the crime scene is very important canvassing the area is very important canvassing the last time of where hypothetically the phone was pinged or whatever all of those things are important I, just from reading and what i've read about the case there was a lot of things that weren't i guess you'd say handled well mm -hmm. um, unfortunately like i said at the first of this sometimes agencies don't have people in positions that are trained appropriately Sometimes, unfortunately, the good old boy system still at, at large, as they say, when it comes down to some people getting positions in various agencies. And it doesn't matter if it's law enforcement, it could be McDonald's for that matter. Yeah. Sometimes people are put in positions of manager or whatever uh, that they're assigned something and they really shouldn't have been assigned because they weren't trained or they didn't have the knowledge. And then 
that's where these kind of cases fall to the wayside and they're not properly uh, handled. Well, we are trying to get one of the daughters to come on here and basically tell us there what a lot of stuff do we have some questions for them my question one of my big questions would be has the crime scene been or what i call on the crime scene the garage has it been cleaned up yet and if not then why not go ahead if it's still sealed get a private eye out there with some luminol get some other people if if the police are saying they're not willing to go back and do it you know, get some people out there that's going to, but apparently the wife uh, I she sold is, the house. well, I think they sold the house. Yeah, that's I heard, I heard Dean in the background. They they sold the house to someone this, and then they tried to go back out there apparently and the people wouldn't let them go out there. Yeah, it's just, this to me is, is it's almost like a gigantic cover up, you know? Okay. Well, somebody asked, could the sheriff been in on it? Uh, I don't think the sheriff would be in on it from the get go, but the, you know, we don't know, we don't know what, you know, what type of uh, history okay. she has within the county. Either. Okay. Lori says if the investigators in Dallas are not investigating, how do you get them to look into this case seriously? Well, if they the problem is, and what I've seen is once you declare something a suicide, it is almost, especially if a law enforcement does that, it is almost impossible to reopen it unless you got something, some real hard evidence. And if they had what I've always said, if this was a homicide, maybe somebody, if they got in trouble down the road, something seriously got caught trafficking drugs or uh, involved in a robbery, and they say, hey, you help me out on this, and I'll tell you about a murder. In other words, somebody comes well, from that, home, you know? right. Well, at the current sheriff, which was apparently in charge of the case, if the, to answer the person who ever asked the question, if a current sheriff closes a case, that doesn't necessarily mean that the case could, could very well be closed permanently. You have what's called the ability to vote. You can vote oh, in a right. new sheriff and a new sheriff can come in and go. they can open the case as a cold case. That's why we have what's called some some sheriff's departments have what's called cold case investigation units. Right. Uh, so, yes, a case could still be opened up that way. Another way would be, of course, the local district attorney. And then the next step would be the state's attorney. Well, um, the daughters could file a civil case. Could here, they? the, see, that's what I told. I told uh, was talking to one, a friend of one of the daughters. I said they may want to get if they think if they develop some evidence just because they feel like the mothers and or the Becca's involved. That's not good enough. But if they had some type of evidence, they could file a wrongful death suit. And a lot of that stuff could be found out. One thing. Well, well even even the argument like you just put up. Let's take the um, Becca, the wife, completely mm -hmm. out of the equation. You still have a vacancy, if you will, that there should be a suspect or suspects for this kind of case and what they have as evidence that has been found overturned and uh, what the knowledge of that we know about this case it is a homicide case it doesn't matter which way you look at it uh, it's a homicide and it needs to be investigated completely as a homicide and they yeah. should have investigated it from the get-go as a homicide this guy wasn't if you look at this poster he wasn't overweight he looked like he was physically fit uh, he was older uh, you know, it, it, he goes into a little bit here. Um, $25,000 reward has been offered. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. they felt like he was forcibly taken from the building. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, he was six, three, two twenty five. I mean, this guy was a little guy, you know? And, uh, even though he was 70 years old, his daughter said, Hey, he may be 70, but he mm -hmm. not, an elderly man by far, you know. Mm -hmm. And I want to say something too about a case that I'm going to send you this Suzanne Morphy case. 
Uh, one of the big hopes we have on this case, the next, that case, and I'll send you the information is that a new DA is going to be involved in it and uh, uh, maybe some stuff, but I'll send you all that. But going back to this one, I mean, 6'3", 225. I mean, this guy is not a small guy. 70 years well, old. He was, a, he was a firefighter. I mean, right. firefighters have to be yeah, they had to, fit to be yeah. able to handle carrying an air pack. I mean, right. obviously, I was a firefighter too. So, um, you know, you have to be pretty physically fit. Yeah. Basically. And even at 70 years old, he still looked like he was in good shape. Right. And they even said, I, I'm, I think I read, they said, other than him just having bad knees, his upper body and everything, he was pretty strong. Yeah. I, I can't remember. Uh, somebody asked sarcastically, did she get her mascara? <laughs> oh, I, MH, uh -oh. MH said she may have had a black book of all her lovers and they're covering for her now. So she knows where the bodies are buried. Yeah. I mean, she could very well. One thing is one thing that I thought of and is that, you know, who I want to know who's her last boyfriend, you know, there's other boyfriends that she's had all these stuff. Who are her last boyfriend? And do you think that she maybe fell in love with this guy? And she's now she's trying to get rid of the current husband because he is the money source. You know, I mean, I, I know if you're like uh, when uh, most people have life insurance that came out of law enforcement or or firefighter and something like that. They've had law, uh, they have it. And even their uh, state retirement in incorporates some of that with it. Right. So, and, and like with us uh, in Alabama, your uh, retirement allows you to do it two or three different ways. One is that, and it's, I think it's at least the way I did it. I don't know how you did it, Tony, but the way I did it was if something happens to me, then my wife gets my check, just like, that is right now it won't affect it at all and she gets my check for the rest of her life but there's other ways you can do it one is you take a a little bit more money right now but and then if something happens it splits, it splits it in half it splits yeah. it in half but uh it's just and then a lot no, of times I you I get, I get uh, the same amount no here. but there's two other ways okay, you can yeah. take it See, Steve, they man did it the other way. Okay. But, uh, or a lot of times, like we have a friend, mutual friend of ours, he goes by the nickname of day man. And that's all I'm going to call him. That's all the name I've, I've ever called him. Uh, he decided to take it in where he gets the maximum amount of money. And then if he should die, he bought like a million dollar insurance policy where she would get, the million dollars instead of the retirement, which it's, it's weird. It's a weird, a weird way to do it. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I do, you know, I think it she doesn't help her case by going out and selling all this stuff and declaring him trying to get temporary mm -hmm. dead, which is something they must do in Texas after two months of being missing. As to me, that just, I don't know. I just, it's really, really strange. It's puzzling. It is puzzling, but and they still they still could, like I said, if they. Uh, I think I read there was a private investigation uh, company that was hired, and they uh, basically either petitioned the attorney general's office or somebody requesting the case be opened back up as a homicide. Um, yeah. you know yeah. the outcry of the people in that community. Um, you know, and getting, you know, getting it, whether it be on social media or whatever they would need to do to facilitate a push, then yes, that could very well be opened back up. And uh, yes, things were done extremely wrong in what appears to be the front side of this investigation, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the case cannot be uh, brought to justice still yeah, even homicide, no no uh, statute limitations on homicide right or rape or kidnapping and a bunch of those other stuff but uh, uh, all, all, all they did is they might could have retrieved or had more evidence that would have helped to facilitate 
a team in the right direction to apprehend the suspect or suspects uh, quicker or, or, you know, have more more information to be able to go on. And obviously that, that that's what you want to do. Uh, the little show that's on now, I think it's called 48 Hours. Um, yeah. They've, you know, they'll have various uh, investigation teams, whether it be Birmingham, Alabama, uh, New York, just different places. It is very, very important. Those first 48 are actually really crucial to a case. Yeah. If you really get on it and you, yeah, first, you first, take your heart into it, I mean, that's the way that I personally did my uh, even uh, burglary cases. Um, you can really solve burglary cases a whole lot uh, faster as well as in the sense of getting the actually solved if you get on it. Yeah. And really start following your leads, and 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 I, I have I, I saw several burglaries that uh, most people be like, how in the world did you do that? Well, yeah, it's cell phone evidence. It's all kinds of stuff that you go into, and you get the right search warrants, and you take on the right leads, and you do it pro, you know, appropriately. Uh, then you yeah. recover physical evidence. You recover <laughs> stolen property or whatever. Linda, yes, the water, if it was checked, yes, it has been. Show her the picture of the uh, bridge again. I asked. Uh, okay, I'll show. Somebody asked for a picture of the bridge again. Uh, right here. It. I mean, I'm telling you folks, uh, that that to me is comical for him to say the guy that he jumped over the bridge with his bike to kill himself. Uh, it's comical, really, it is, to think he would do that. I mean, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have died from an impact of the water from that no and he wouldn't and i think it's i think it's almost impossible to drown yourself just because of the survival instinct of of uh you know it's just survival instinct and plus the fact that nobody they had people out there working on the bridge and nobody saw him and i tell you well, how short short of you and i giving um too much information on investigation stuff with homicides, uh, a man and or a woman, there is certain things that men do more, not okay. saying that every one of them is this particular way, but men do certain things more to commit suicide. Women tend to do other things more to do their suicides. In other words, we look at those things as how possibly a woman or a man may do those things. And that is actually an important thing, just like in this case. And you, you know start ruling out you start ruling out things of okay, well then if they did, is this something they normally would do? Have they talked about this? Do they go, you know, there's a there's a there is somewhat of a puzzle that you put together with these kinds of cases. And one thing too, you know, he's talking about we were talking about people I've had people say, well, maybe they didn't see him on the bridge. So I'm going to tell you a, a particular case uh, near the department. And I have not told them, Tony, where that I used to work at. I, I'm just not going to go into those places right now. But right. there was a high rise bridge area, 65 feet off the water. And it was a night where there was not much traffic. Yet people saw a guy jump from mm -hmm. the bridge. And you know what he did? He hit the water and he swam out 65 feet. So, uh, you know, he was thinking about killing himself. He actually, we thought he was trying to kill himself. When we got the guy on the side of the bank, he said he did it for a girl to show her that he would do anything for her. Oh, Lord. Uh, a little crazy in my opinion, but hey, if you want to jump off a bridge and, and 65 feet is enough to kill you if you land right. Right. Well, another thing, another thing too that we look at, and you know this, um, and most people probably would understand this for sure. Uh, various parts of the United States, someone chooses to jump off a bridge. We also look at whether they're dry drowning or wet drowning, the temperature of the water, or they suffer hypothermia. There's all kinds of things that are indicative in those types of investigations. And two, if they don't have a strong current. I have seen in drownings, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, is they'll be right around in that area where they went down. That's they'll right. be within 10 feet. Uh, they'll drown and their body will lay on the, the uh, down below it, even with a slight tidal surge. I've seen it right there. 
but we'll be put a helicopter in the air and everything else can't still can't see them. Right. So it's a weird situation. Listen, Tony, thanks for coming on tonight. I enjoyed it immensely just seeing you talking with you and we're going to talk some more. I'm going to send you that case on, uh, on the Susan Morphew case. And, and, we'll, and I want, I would, uh, give you uh, some uh, other guys that have uh, actually interviewed uh, who I consider a suspect and uh, some other things and let you, I want you to look at it without me going into what my beliefs are on it and talk and we'll get you back if you want to and uh, give you your opinion on it. Cause it's a case that a lot of people are, are very, very interested in. You had a question? Yeah, Denise said, do you think it was planned out ahead of time? I would think, Denise, with her sending him to get mascara, yes. I would yeah, say that, that's planned. the one key to me is I think whatever happened was, you know, that was a chance for somebody to come in and, and get there, you know, without being, I guess, with the, and preparing to get, you know, get to ambush you, you might say. Uh, I just cannot see this being a suicide in no shape, form, or fashion. Uh, you know, sure, all of it, his car was there and all that, but his wallet was taken, his cell phone was taken. I don't know. It looked like to me he may have had it in his pocket or something, you know. Right. Listen, Tony, thanks, buddy. I do appreciate you coming on with us, and uh, uh, we will do this again if you're up for it. And well, everybody that's watching, thank you for letting me come and be a part of y'all this evening. I also say to everyone, especially in the 2020 year that we're in, may God bless you and your families. I pray yeah. healing over our nation. I also pray for each of the families and the family members if they've been experiencing any sort of sickness or disease or anything with all this stuff going on. I pray yeah. that God will heal those yeah. families. Right. We are not ashamed of our Lord and Savior, and that we absolutely put people can decide not to subscribe. And I've had many that have said that, but you know, uh, I'm not worried about those people. I'm not, and we we're men. Me and Tony are in agreements on that. And uh, if you have any further questions or something before we go, uh, I'm gonna go over here and look at the. Uh, Thank, thank you, uh, Angela. I appreciate that gift. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you. People saying thank you, Tony, for coming. Uh, and he'll, I'm sure I could get him back. I'll, I'll get him. I'd love to have his opinion on the Morphe case. That's one that, uh, that we impact. are looking. Uh, send us, send us, uh, any questions too that you might think that want to ask him when and i'll send all that stuff to you tony when i can and uh and we'll decide when uh your best bet to come come back on we get a lot of thank yous on the the chat also you you know uh tony's going through a little rehab himself so uh had a uh, head just got out of surgery and uh and he is he is getting well, so keep him in your prayers too, for sure. And I think uh, his nose job looks good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, hey, it's it's straighter than it has been in oh, 30 years. <laughs> but we uh, we go back a long ways, a lot of good memories, and uh, we'll uh, we'll tell you about some uh, sometime, but. Oh. But please, crime said his uncle passed away from coronavirus a few hours ago. Oh man, oh. I hate to hear that. that oh, well, bad. We, we're gonna lift up that family in prayer then, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, no, I don't think Sergeant Melinda has COVID. No, she I, doesn't. I think she is, uh, she's dealing with some illnesses right now. We want to keep her in our prayers also. But we will, we'll talk again, Tony. Okay, and, thank you. And uh, just, uh, I'll get up with you by phone and stuff and we'll talk about it and I'll send you that other case information. And I'd okay. like to have about a week to look at it 
And, you know, this week I know is not a great time because everybody's going to be celebrating Thanksgiving, but I'll send it out to you. And, okay. Uh, all right, brother. Hey, your lovely wife I said hello to. Dana, hello. Hey, good to see you, <laughs> even if you have turned white-headed. Hey, bro. <laughs> Hey brother, well, I, love I don't, I don't, I don't have to go get any kind of special shine for the vehicle. I just stick my head out, and everybody says, "Well, wow, that's a chromed up vehicle right there." Hey, you ain't gonna turn into a possum, huh? <laughs> oh, no, I don't we, know. Know, we know a possum, don't we? All right, brother, I love you, man. We'll talk to you another time. Okay, be blessed. Bye -bye. Okay, well, that was good with Tony. Uh, I almost felt like praying there with him, but. Uh, didn't do it, so maybe God forgive me. Uh, but anyway, y'all be praying and keep everybody in your prayers. And uh, we hope to see you back here tomorrow night. Like I said, we hope to have uh, Echo Lloyd's daughter here. If everything works out, we are going to send her a uh, a message and invite her on, and basically going to let her tell her tale. She had. She was. She went on one of the other shows. I'm not going to name who it is, but was said she felt like uh, poop afterwards, and that he he kind of uh, got. I don't know what the deal was. She had a bad. She had a bad experience, and I don't want that on here. So uh, what I'm going to do is allow her to just tell her tale, and then if you have any questions. Uh, ask them that's what we'll do we'll ask them but you got to remember too she does have a suspect but we're not going to um elaborate tomorrow night on who that is because one he has not been named a suspect or even a person of interest by the police and it's not fair without evidence that you do that i mean i couldn't i wouldn't want that if if my son was that person or my uh, daughter or, or even my husband or, you know, if you were a woman, if I had a husband, if I was a woman, you know what I mean? I, I don't think that that's what we need to be doing. His name is suspects without evidence. Now we'll listen to who, she, you know, we'll listen to her, her. And I talked to her about that. She's in agreements with that. Uh, she doesn't want any legal problems to slander or, or libel or anything. So, She'll be willing to tell us why she believes there is a suspect and why all those things. But I'm going to let her go with it, and we will see what happens. All right. Hold on. <clears throat> tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. If you can give me that. Actually, we are going to try to get on Friday night. But uh, since it is Thanksgiving, I understand well, it. Thanksgiving's on Thursday. I know, though. but. Since it's Thanksgiving weekend, I'll understand if it's a less than full capacity here. We are asking you, we are closing in on 4,000 subscribers. We're very, very close. Uh, I please am asking you to share these videos. Encourage your friends to, to subscribe. Uh, it would be great if we could reach 4,000 before the end of the month, but it, it's going to be better if we can, we can cross the 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, but I would like for all of you to please share, please share. Yes. More people we have, the more people that might know something. That's all it's about. I, I, I make, just a little bit from YouTube, believe me, it's not much, but I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Dana, do you have oh, anything? Yes. I'm, I'm fixing to give them a recipe. Hold on. Okay. Two packages of Recipe. Recipes are coming. My milk, milk is good for you. Yeah, I, I meant to drink a cup of coffee, but I think I'll go after You should have drank some buttermilk and cornbread. Yeah, buttermilk. Mm. Yeah. But Tony has been a good friend of mine for a long time. We have done some, we have been uh, on some un un unbelievable calls together. Um, 
in one week during the spring break week, oh, I, I worked a uh, fatality or older woman crossed the road and get hit by a car. Tony was with me. The second one had a girl hit by a car on a road and it, it tore her leg off. That was not a, a very good experience. And then the third one was when I saw the 11 year old boy get run over and killed by a car. And he was with me. Actually, I was waiting on him when that happened. And that, <sighs> it, I actually didn't do real well after that call. I was not, to put it this way, it made me sick, which not is unusual for me, but it was the third one in a week. And it just had got too much, got too much for me. What? Dana. I finally got it up there and I had to put it in three things. Y'all, this is a cranberry um, salad that is so sweet. It can be used as a dessert. And I always have it with cornbread dressing. Um, we were going to take, go out. My dad wanted to go out to eat, but COVID has gotten worse here since mom. This is the first Thanksgiving without mom. So I told him I would cook. So we're having the ham and dressing and hot corn and, um, hot corn and sweet potato yams and pumpkin pie, buttermilk pie and apple pie. Well, it sounds great. Sounds like the keto thing and not going to be working this week. Nope. And I see that's one reason I'm a little bit in the down in the dumps this week is because I've gained some weight and uh, it's, it aggravates me. I'm, I'm a little, I'm overweight. I'm, I'd like to lose 15 pounds or maybe Walk next week. Walk the dog. Walk the dog, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, guess what I'm making in there right now, guys. And if y'all want the recipe, I'll give it to you. It is the best. Potato chip cookies. Yeah, potato chip cookies. That's, <laughs> that's real. Your that's downfall. real good. That's real excellent. Well, Tony's gone already. Somebody said, hey, Mr. Tony. Uh, Tony's gone right now. He may be listening. I don't know. Uh, but uh, he will be back with us. I look forward to having him back. He's a wealth. He is a wealth of knowledge. And uh, we probably could go on some night and tell you some real tall tales, but uh, some we, we, someday we will. We'll, we'll go into that. But anyway. Um, but we do, you know, the keto thing, we're not going to worry about it real bad between now and Christmas because someone promised me if I'd go look at a truck with him, he would do a 21 day juice fast with me <laughs> and he doesn't think he can do it, but he can. We've done 14 days before, but yeah, we're going to do 21. I lost 21. 38 pounds in 14 days and that's, I know it doesn't sound healthy, but my doctor was okay with it. Okay. Uh, need a cookbook. I don't know how to do a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do, I don't know how to do one. We'll work on that with her. Okay, well, it is, uh, I don't know if anybody's on after us now or not, if uh, the Draper brothers are in there tonight or not. Uh, regardless, um, we do sincerely appreciate all y'all coming out tonight. And look, please show back up tomorrow night. We want like a big audience for uh, Miss Lloyd and uh to talk about her mother and she is very she is still looking for earnestly hoping that she is alive so we can also pray that that will uh go good and uh we will um wow Jean, that's 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 amazing um we will um we'll let you go god bless y'all and stay well, and we will see you tomorrow night. Now, I've got a little video here that my wife put up about, sent me today with the dogs, a new dog video. I know you're probably getting tired of the dog videos, but, and, uh, we can't help it. We just love her. All yeah. right. Well, good night. Good love night, you guys. Ready? Dead dog. Dead. Bang. Dead dog. Lay down. 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 Dead. Dead dogs have their head down. Dead. Put your head down. <gasps> Wait a minute. Look at that dead dog. Woo! <laughs> what? Hey! 
Okay, down. Okay, yes, we got excited. We Maggie, now you're gonna quit, aren't you? Because I turned the camera. <laughs> you talking to me? What? You got your grin on. <laughs> Are you talking to me? <laughs> inside voice. Oh, that's not it. That's not an inside voice. What? Oh, careful. You talking to me? That's good. That you. That. Uh, hey, hey. Okay. That is good. Hey, hey. You're using your inside voice. Inside voice. Oh. You better be careful. What do you want? Huh? <laughs> Back. Inside voice. That's cat food. You can't have cat food. All day long you've wanted that cat food. <laughs> Maggie, listen to me. You cannot have the cat food. Do you know it? Hey, inside voice. Inside voice. Uh -uh. 